Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you the five secrets to making the perfect unicorn horn for your unicorn cake. The most popular cake known to man. It's time to get magical. Let's do this. Grab some fondant, warm it up, knead it, get it nice and stretchy. If things get sticky, put some cornstarch on your work surface and or a vegetable shortening on your hands. Too much cornstarch can dry out your fondant, but vegetable shortening will moisten it up. First roll it into a ball and then start rolling it into a log shape. And that brings us to secret number one. Use your palms, not your fingers. Your fingers will make dents in your fondant, whereas your palms, since they're a flat surface, will make your fondant nice and smooth and marshmallowy looking. If you're a professional cake decorator and you've made hundreds upon hundreds of unicorn cakes, give me a you know it in the comments. So we're gonna wanna roll this into, think of a carrot kind of shape, where it's pointing on one end, it gets gradually thicker to the other end. And the way to do this is secret number two, under pressure. Most of the time you're gonna want to have two hands rolling your fondant. So how do you make one side smaller than the other? Well, it simply comes down to pressure. We're gonna add more pressure to the left side where we're coming to a point. As you get better and better at these horns, you can start bringing it to a very small point. But for now, let's not go too crazy because then it gets really delicate. And when it's your first time doing this, we don't wanna deal with that. You're gonna roll out one and then put it aside. Then you're gonna to wanna to roll out an identical piece. A little trick to doing this besides eyeballing it is first, you know, you just do your best and then put the two pieces together and then start rolling them together. And this will naturally help them become the same size. And then we're gonna line them up together where the small ends line up, but the other end doesn't matter. If you're right-handed, you're gonna want the points facing to the right and obviously left-handed the other way. This brings us to secret number three, do not skip this step. Secret number three is get tacky. Dip your Wilton decorating brush in some water, not too saturated, and just brush some water down the middle. This is gonna make your fondant sticky or tacky. Grab a nice long skewer with the non-pointy tip at the point. We're gonna use a super pointy end to insert it into the cake. And you're gonna to wanna to pick up the right side of your fondant pieces and put them in your right hand. Place your skewer down the middle. And now this is the part that all these videos you see people making unicorn horns look so simple. Oh, just twist it up. Well, it feels that way after you've done it hundreds and hundreds of times. But the first time you do it, it's actually a little harder than you realize. So I found a way to explain this technique and break it down so you can actually do this right the first time. If you're liking this video, click the thumbs up button to let me know. If you'd like to learn how to bake and decorate more cakes and sweets, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you receive notifications every time I post a new video. Secret number four is braid, then twist. So let me break this down for you. First, you're gonna take the bottom thicker pieces and the stick is gonna be your center middle line. And you're gonna be braiding the fondant pieces around this stick. And just like braiding, you're gonna do one piece under and the other piece over. After you do that, make sure that the pieces are evenly wrapped. After you get one braid at the bottom, then you can start working more on the top and then eventually move back to the bottom when it feels comfortable. While you're doing this, I want you to focus on the tips being even to each other, but don't worry about the bottom. We can just twist that right off. When you get to the very, very top, then you can kind of just twist it around the stick and same with the bottom, when you get to the very, very bottom, you're gonna to wanna to twist it around the stick. And don't worry at the bottom, you can smush it a little bit and like twist it. It actually helps the fondant stay in place, so it's gonna be covered up by buttercream. Now you're gonna to wanna to slide this fondant where it reaches the top of your skewer. There's gonna be just a little bit of resistance as you try to slide it, this is good. That means your fondant is tacky. This is gonna help keep it in place around the stick. You're gonna want your skewer to be just underneath the tip of your unicorn horn. If it's right at the tip, then when you go to twist it, it's gonna push against that hard surface and it's gonna break. But we do want that support, so just beneath the tip. Try not to be a perfectionist with the tip of this unicorn horn the first time. Um, just kind of, you can just kind of mold it into a point. You don't wanna mess with it too much. It's gonna look great. Also, try not to unbraid it and rebraid it because there's gonna be dents from the skewer and the fondant. So as you push your fondant to the tip of this stick, 
you're gonna have you know gaps in some places some places are gonna be tighter this is where the twisting can really help you even it out just twist with your hands in a way where it is spiraling just how you like this brings us to secret number five aesthetics there are some characteristics you're gonna want your horn to have to have it looking its most magical and elegant I would argue the most important characteristic is the spiral effect if you twist your fondant around too much horizontally and like too smushed together, you're not going to see the spiral effect. So you want to it, like elongate your unicorn horn so you can really see that spiral. This is one of the reasons why wetting your fondant is so important. You're going to be able to, your fondant's going to be able to hold on to the stick so it, when you dry it, gravity doesn't push it down because we are going to be drying this straight up and down because if you try to dry it on its side, it's just too heavy and there will be a flat side in the back. The other aesthetic characteristic you want your horn to have is you want it to be thin and long. And I like when the unicorn horn is at least as tall as the height of the cake. If it's shorter, it's not that big of a deal, but it just doesn't look as majestic. Last but not least is painting it with the most beautiful gold color you can find. I like to dry my unicorn horn at least overnight before painting it. I also like to put it in a foam block and have the bottom touching the block because gravity is going to be fighting it and this will help a little bit. The stick will be coming out the end so a really good place for this to dry is that gap between your stovetop and your countertop. If you don't have a foam block you can do something like this with your cooling rack. All right so the most satisfying part of all this is painting it gold. Get the best gold dust you can find. I am using TMP Super Gold Luster Dust. It is a non-toxic gold, which means that it's kind of like, you know, kids paint. It's not edible, but it's not toxic if the kid surprises you. <laughs> if you want an edible gold, I recommend uh, Baykel Super Gold Luster Dust. Okay, so grab some vodka. I actually use Everclear because it's 90 proof alcohol, so it dries the fastest but vodka is fine. And just have it be a nice uh, consistency, not too thin, not too thick. If you can't use alcohol, then um, I suggest vegetable oil. Um, just know that it is pretty messy because it, it never totally dries. So you have to be really careful not to touch it. And you just paint it on with a Wilton decorating brush and it dries really fast because it's alcohol, it evaporates. At the end, I like to do a once over, kind of smooth it over because you're really painting on a dust. Would you like to learn the secrets to making the perfect unicorn ears and eyes? And check out my other video that includes these as well. And there you go, guys. The perfect unicorn horn, five secrets to accomplish this your very first time out. Let me know in the comments what you'd like to see me bake or decorate next. Thank you guys so much for watching and I can't wait to see you next time.